Hello and welcome back to another episode of Internal Rambles. This is your girl, Rochelle. If you are new, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you for tuning in. Internal Rambles is a very eclectic podcast. It literally is the way that it sound sounds. It is the rambling internal thoughts of your girl, Rochelle. My main podcast episodes releases every Thursday 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can reach me pretty much everywhere that you get your podcast content. And I talk about everything from a career, life, trending topics, entertainment, music, goal setting, self-care, basically what's going on in my life as a 30-something-year-old <laughs> professional woman. And my bonus content releases whenever it releases. Typically, that's towards the weekend time. And that bonus content is usually my reality recaps. I should be beginning to review and recap this current season of Married at First Sight. And I also will be periodically recapping and reviewing season six of Ready to Love. Please check out my previous content. I have everything on just random topics, trending topics, topics about relationships. If you want to, you can check out my previous reality recaps. I just finished recapping and reviewing the season of love and marriage dc subscribe to me so that every time i release you get my content immediately i do release on youtube that's just the audio that's another way to reach me but it is a way to interact with me if you do want to interact with me i really would love to know what you are thinking about what i'm talking about Uh, So if you ever want to leave me a comment, a question, a concern, or anything, you can always pop over to Internal Rambles on YouTube, No Space, and your girl will pop up. Just Just a little disclaimer about YouTube. Sometimes there's a little bit of a delay when my episodes release on there. Usually within a few hours, they do show up on YouTube. But this is my normal episode. Thursday is 8 a.m. And I tend to start off with Rochelle's rants or Rochelle's raves my rant is something that I'm just agitated about upset it's getting on my nerves Rochelle raves is something that I'm positive about I'm optimistic about I feel content or happy or I'm looking forward to or whatever it literally is I'm very direct and I really hold no punches so it really do be the way that it sounds so (laughs) I kind of was going back and forth because I had a couple of rants. Do I have a rave? I might have a rave. I, I think I might have forgot what my rave was. Oh, I do have a rave. Sorry. Um, so I what I will say is that I will just kind of briefly. I have two rants. I'm just going to be honest. I, one of the things about me is I, I'm really honest. And I had mentioned that I'm really private. And I'm a very private person. But I also realized, just kind of listening to some of my previous content, that even though I may not give the full story on everything, recently I really have been given insight into my life. <laughs> I don't know if anyone, if you're listening to my previous content, if you've been here before. I don't know if you picked up on it. But I really be talking talking about my life one way or another so anyways I had been mentioning um just I I like to balance it out I don't want every episode to be a rant and I do have a rave so here we are but you know life be life and so if I have a few rants for a few weeks that you know it'll be truly authentic and organic but my rant number one it's brief. I'm actually, I, it, it really is pretty self-explanatory. I just like consistent people. Just be consistent. And I know I don't expect perfection. No one is perfect. Child, your girl Rochelle is not perfect. But I just don't like that. Don't take your issues out on me. If you are having a day, have a day. We all have days. If you If you're having a few days, but don't take it out on me. And I just don't like funny acting people. Like, if we're cool most of the time, but... Because for me, if I'm having a moment, 
yeah I, I like to kind of stay to myself just so that my mood isn't influencing no one else's mood but for the most part you know I'm pretty consistent if I rock with you I really do rock with you and that but I think that's very telling when people are sometime me that really is indicative of the relationship that you have with them and or who they are as a person so I don't really like some timey people I'm a pretty consistent if I if I I don't my circle is so small if I rock with you I rock with you so my other rant is to myself so I am one thing that I say all the time and if I think I'm I've mentioned probably is I'm a planner no you can't I mean if anything this pandemic has showed us you cannot plan for everything and your plans may get sidetracked and they may get sidetracked for some years <laughs> but um I like to just have things that I'm looking forward to especially when you know you work in a certain if you work really hard and you your life just feels like you work 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 you always want to make sure you're doing that self-care portion if you didn't know I'm a therapist by trade so I'm really adamant about that and um I like to plan and so my goal next year is a pretty big year birthday wise and I was supposed to at, at least pick the location because it, I will my next my plan for my next year special birthday <laughs> is to um, not be in the not not only be out of town but not even be in the state like I, I'm not doing anything I'm not going to Turks and Caicos or Tulum it'll be in the U.S. but I had two locations and I needed to at least kind of do my own I've been kind of getting like verbal recommendations from people and I've looked into one location a little bit but I just needed to definitively decide where so I'm like yo I told you where now nah. <laughs> like literally a year plus ago so you can't ever say I never told you but also for me because I really the way that I'm gonna have to do it is child is gonna have it's involving a lot of people not a lot of people but multiple people more than I typically travel with as of late so it's gonna be a lot of movable parts so um yeah I gotta get on this early um and, and then start pricing stuff um and just but for my own peace of mind, it's just like, girl, which which, which place you going to be at? <laughs> and I was supposed to do that May. It's August. <laughs> so I'm just like, my rant is like, you need to. And the thing about it is, if you've paid it, if you've been here before, but if you're new, I'll let you know. The past four months no, 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 no. Prior to August, I had three months where I was booked and busy. Just a lot of with work, personal engagements, family engagements, my own. It, like it just like at every off day, uh, weekends. Oh, child, please. They were booked. So it was really hard. And then when if I did have a free day, I was just like not moving. I was on that couch resting sleeping watching my favorite shows like just winding down because I just was running all over the place so I have a little small window of period where I really don't have anything planned which is not totally true I do have a few things kind of sort of but it's nothing that's like overwhelming and but September really ramps up I'm, I'm pretty busy in September so like this is like the sweet spot if, for lack of a better way to put it where for me to like just sit down, rest your brain with everything else and just pick a place. Like do your research and pick a place. So that's my rant. I need to get on that because I've been, I've been trying to do that for months and just haven't sat down and do it. So that's my rant. It's like, girl, get on it. <laughs> and my rave is just, um, there's someone in my life who I'm just, I'm really super cool with and they just... I don't, you know, I, I feel like I, you know, I have like very great relationships where I feel like, you know, we, the, the relationship is equal or, you know, but then I have some relationships where I'm like, it's, it's I'm not used to just kind of leaning on people and, and not even that. It's just this person just always just looking out for me, um, or just really helping me and, 
I was just in a situation where it was just like, I knew the background of what this person was doing, but no one else around us probably didn't know. But um, just no matter where we are, you know, some people, they real cool behind closed doors, but then they, they get some tiny or they get real, you know, you never know how they're going to be in front of people. But this person has always just looked out for me for years, 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 been so sweet, so kind. And so I, I tend to just, I just love a kind person for no, you know, someone that's not expecting anything from you. Like, oh, I did that for you. So you got to do it. Like, I cannot stand it. Like, if you do something, do it all the kindness of your heart. It's not a tit-for-tat type of a thing. Um, Because that's not genuity to me. So, yeah, just a kudos to some of the good people that I have in my life. And I appreciate them. And I'm I'm a real, you know, I, I practice my daily gratitudes and all of that and so that's constantly on my mind just being great even when the whatever's going on it's like you just have to think you have to be mindful like things to be grateful for you know and so yeah I just I, I just you know I adore and I love just like people that just they never waver because there's just been people that have wavered and there's been people that I've known for years that I never thought would would get funny on your girl and they do and at the end of the day, you know, the saying says, sometimes people are only meant to be in your life for a season or seasons, and then it's, you know, they got, you got to chuck up them deuces, and like I mentioned in, I think, my last podcast, or a podcast before last, my cutoff game be super strong, <laughs> so probably a little abnormally strong, but yeah, so that's my rage, just, I'm appreciative of those that really, really support me, so that's that segment so let's move on and if you've been here I know I've been saying this I don't know like a lot of this has been connecting to kind of previous like really recent content but one of my rants was to uh, to myself internal rambles is really supposed to be organic there there are going to be episodes that I plan now especially like my bonus content is usually planned or like I'm more intentional about that because when I'm reviewing shows I have to make sure that I write out kind of like what's what happened in the show like I can't remember everybody's name so those are a bit more planned um I also have a segment that I know it's coming it's coming my third installment of my top five albums for my favorite artists i already know who i actually know who it's gonna be i and i'm not gonna say who it is because that was sport but it is gonna be i will tell you i you know what i'm gonna tell you the genre because i know who the artist is gonna be so i previously have done r&b so one of the second i love music i love concerts so i have done my top five albums from Tony Braxton and I rank them I tell you why and Jodeci but I said I was going to get out of R&B because I love all different types of music and so my next genre is actually going to be a rock artist I decided so (laughs) I'll give a little teaser but I'm not going to say who but I really am going to try to do that within the next two weeks so that's a goal and if I don't reach that goal, then it'll be a rant to myself. And that those rants really just be me tapping myself on the shoulder when they're to myself like, um, hello. So the next one will be a rock artist. And I'm excited because I've seen this artist live and I've loved them for many a years. Oh, goodness gracious. And I'll have to speak more to this a little bit later. But yeah, so I'm excited. <laughs> Um, but my recent, one of my recent rants that was actually to myself was that I have been planning out my normal episodes a little bit too much. And though these episodes really should be organic. And I think it's just, I've been doing this podcast since August, um, August, October of 2021. And recently I just had like fear of like not having enough to talk about, but I said, you know, if I start planning everything, then it's not going to be internal rambles. It's not going to be organic. It's not going to be how I truly am, which is really just random and all over the place. So this episode here, I have the only thing I planned out or I thought about beforehand, like really like, okay, was my rants and raves. So I don't know where this is going to go. <laughs> this There is nothing 
plan out except for I think I am going to do an entertainment recommendation but it's not really anything new so I but like this actual main podcast content I don't have anything planned so let me see what I want to talk about (laughs) well you know I will say this speaking of my like my birthday actually is next month um I am a Libra Libra gang I don't know what your sign is but the Libras we're the dopest okay so because I know that next year is gonna be pricey and out of town and this year I want it to be low keys but I'm still trying to like figure out what I want to do I think I know what I want to do um, and, and it's nothing extravagant or like I mean actually it's kind of nice I mean it's cool but actually I thought about it like I actually have my birthday a little more planned out than I think I th- I thought I did so I just actually today as I'm recording I put in to for the approval for my time off for my birthday next month so I and I think I'm off six days um, and so I don't, I'm pretty sure I'm doing, I have like four things I want to do. <laughs> and I would say that definitely two out of four I'm doing. Um, and one of those things I can mention, uh, right now, and that is I plan on getting my seventh tattoo I have talked about tattoos periodically on this podcast I love tattoos I love them since I was a little girl and um one of the things that I talked about is there was a tattoo artist who he mentioned the top five places that are the most painful to have a tattoo and I have two out of the five so you know (laughs) Um, but yeah, tattoos are not for everybody and they're permanent and please be mind, you know, my, my recommendation is make sure you know what you want and you really want it because they are permanent. I know that you can get them removed, but have you seen the removal process? It is a pro it's, did you, it is literally a removal process and it looks so painful. They're literally burning your skin to get that off. So yeah, but I already know what I want. And I know where I want it at. So all my tattoos, as I have mentioned, this is, this is, I should call this as I have mentioned. I'm not going to call this podcast that, but yeah, this is kind of referring to a lot of stuff, but, um, they're by the same tattoo artist and he's still tattooing. So I, this month I need to go get up with him and make sure that everything like plan it out. Cause it's. He has to put up with me. I never, I rarely have a full, I know what I want, but it's very, it's usually he has to do his own. He is definitely an artist. He has to do his own judge to it. And what I want is actually the combination of two tattoos. So he has to figure out how to do that. And I know he can do it because he's, incredible so i have to go see him and get scheduled and all that good jazz so that is what i do plan on doing and i need i know i know when i was and I, I doubt it's probably different at this point when i used to get tattoos like it, you had i had to book a month in advance because if not i would not get the day and the time that i wanted so um it had i do want it to be pretty much the beginning of my time off so that by the time I return back to work I'm definitely in that beginning decent healing stage of the tattoo process so yeah uh and the other stuff will work out but I you know I thought like I don't really know what I want to do with my birthday I've really been pondering it I pretty much have like four ideas and two out of four I do plan on doing so yeah, I believe in celebrating life. You know, I've had I had an ex-boyfriend who he was like, I don't celebrate my birthday. It's just another day. And it's just like, you know, to each their own. I can't tell no one how to live their life. But I believe if nothing else, I'm going to celebrate me. 
And then if you rock with me, you would, at, when I have gatherings or events or whatever, you would come out and celebrate me too, just like I would do the same for you. And, you know, as someone who has experienced a lot of loss stemming from a very early age and has experienced tragic loss, you know, um, it just reinforces no day is promised. And um, when you get those calls of certain calls that I've had in my life, you know, I'm just like, or texts, or no, actually, they've always been called, and the funerals that I've been to, and where, I mean, some very young, 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 um, no day is promised, and it's just like, you know, you try to do your best, and I don't listen, I've had birthdays where I don't, I'm, I have a part, I've had multiple parties, I've gone out and had events, not events, but we'll go do something. But I've had, listen, I celebrate me. I will cook my favorite meal, buy my favorite meal, watch my favorite movies, get me something nice to sip on, and have a great birthday, you know. Go to my parents' house. We do the whole happy birthday, here's the cake, love you, okay, thanks, bye, we exchange the gifts. And then, you know celebrate on my own that's you know especially during the pandemic time I went out out and about during the pandesy I'm still barely you know just only tipping my toe out and bringing it back in (laughs) so whatever whatever celebrating is for you it's it you have to do what's best for you and what feels great for you and what feels content to you you know I love concerts. One of the best things for me to do, and I have done this, is to go to a concert for my birthday. Man, that's amazing. And I've done that like about, I want to say off the top of my head, three times. Um, and I love it. So there's, it's so crazy. I will say this, I'm, that I'm going to get off my birthday. No, I, I mean, I, can, I don't have to, but there's two concerts in September. But they're just at the wrong... I'm already traveling the week prior to my birthday. And it's just in the way that I had to take my time off. It's just like I keep... Like, <sighs> one artist I've seen before. So it's like, okay, if I don't go to that one. But one artist I've always wanted to see. And they're coming near me like two days before my time off. And I'm like, oh, if I could finagle away. And I may be able to... But, as you know, I have to be mindful not to eat up all my time because we accrue time. We don't just get, like, three weeks of vacation. And you you know, however that goes, I don't know. So I'm like, man. But I'm not going to worry about it because, you know, there's been artists that I thought I would never see. You know, I didn't know if I would ever see Jodeci. And I just saw them this year. Thank you, all four of them. JoJo, Casey, Devontae, and Delvin. So, <laughs> Um, and I've been a fan of theirs since 91. So, um, yeah, so yeah, we'll see. But, and I do think that, um, I, I think I could have potentially an opportunity, maybe not this year, maybe next year. So, but I just, I would love to, if I could pick the two, I would pick the one, even though I'm more of a fan of the other, I would rather have, see the artist I've never seen before. So, but anyways, yeah, that's what I got going on. Just trying to plan stuff for my birthday and, you know, just make sure that I'm celebrating life. It's really super important. So kind of really quickly, I just thought about this. I made a rant about how I could not stand the updates to Instagram <laughs> and like the recommendations that they be doing and that I need them to go back to the old Instagram and I don't know if he's like the CEO of Instagram or the director, or whatever. So he came out with a video and he was like, listen, we've heard your complaints. And they, there were two complaints. The first one, I don't really know what he's talking about because I don't think I've experienced it. But he mentioned the second one was the recommendations. He was like, you know, if there's something wrong with our algorithm, we're recommending things to people that people don't want to see so he's like you know we're good so we're gonna limit the recommended post now here's the thing I need y'all to take that all the way away even though sometimes I do get some cool posts 
I can't really tell if there's been a difference. I, I will say I have not, within the last few days, been annoyed with recommended a post. So maybe it's improved. I don't know. But I find it so interesting that, you know, sometimes I just be ranting, you know. But I wasn't the only one ranting about Instagram <laughs> and that particular thing with Instagram. So I thought that was very kind of interesting. So, um, I made a podcast episode and I want to be accurate about what that title was, just in case you want to get my full thoughts on this topic. So I, you know, the, this is, you know, I don't know if this is kind of crass to say or whatever, but the slap that was heard around the world I did make a post about yes I did and it was released on March 31st 2022 and it was called um Will Smith question mark exclamation point and the the description of that was why is Will Smith knucking and bucket at the Oscars? <laughs> I'm sorry. Have you met me? I ain't got no good sense. But so I don't know what day this was. Within the last week, Will Smith. One of the things about so let me okay let me hone in my thoughts. So at the Oscars 2022, Chris Rock was presenting an award. And he makes a comment about Jada. We all know the story, but let me just be, you know, formal about this real quick. Will Smith gets up, smack after that comment about Jada's hair. Will Smith gets up, smacks Chris Rock, sits back down, tells Chris Rock to keep his wife's name out his effing mouth. Okay. So afterwards well so that was also the night that will won his first oscar so it's just like you tainted one of the best one of the nights that should have been one of the best nights of your life with this foolishness no one should ever put their hands on anyone everything is a conversation can be well okay let, let me let me let me go back let me go back a joke can definitely be a conversation not everything can be a conversation. I mean, you know, protect yourself at all times. But um, a joke can definitely be a conversation. And that's what comedians do. And so he apologizes during the show to everybody but Chris. And then I think, yes, he releases a statement. I don't think he even in that statement... He's like, he he does not apologize to Chris. He apologizes to the Academy. He apologizes to whoever, your baby mama and your daddy too. Like, I don't know. But one of the things that people have been upset about and one of the things that really kind of disappointed me even further was just like, you apologizing to everybody but the man you slap, bruh. (laughs) Like, make it make, make it make a little sense. So, Will Smith finally, within the last week, he releases a video and he, you know, he's teary-eyed. It's hard to be like, oh, he's being so, he's being so genuine. Um... And he's an actor. Because he can cry on cue, I'm sure. Um, But he released a five-minute video on July 29, 2022. And he's apologizing to Chris Rock. He's apologizing to Chris Rock's mother. Because Chris Rock's mother did an interview and said like you didn't just hurt Chris like you hurt me you hurt the family and I didn't watch I watched probably about I didn't watch the full five minutes I watched probably about four minutes of it 
Um, but you know, I, I think it is right that he apologizes. It just seems like, you know, when was the Oscars in March? Like, bruh, you about, what's this? Let me do some math. So it's August. What's that? Five months too late? <laughs> I don't know. Like, bruh. I don't know. Or four months because it was August 29th. I'm like, bruh, where were you at for the four months? He says that he reached out to Chris Rock and Chris Rock, you know, to try to meet up or talk. And Chris Rock is like, bruh, I ain't have no conversation with you right now. He mentions about how, um, he was really good friends with Tony Rock, which is Chris Rock's brother. That's de deteriorated. So I do think that there's a level of genuity to it, but it's just like it's hard, you know, four months. And also, by the way, Will Smith has a movie coming out. Like, I don't know if it's this year. It's definitely damage control. And then also, I noticed because I'm I'm real like ridiculous. He's sitting, you know, in his nice chair. He's got the water next to him, which the water bottle is his son's company. Like, everything is such a production with this family. It's like, bruh, be in your bathroom with your iPhone and do a, a, an apology. When you do these, like, staged, like, even with that, like, the water thing, that's promotion. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it that takes away the level of genuity to me. And I saw, I didn't really look into this too much, but I saw, I saw like a, a 2.7 second, it was a little more than this, where this, um, this person, I don't know if he's an interviewer or whatever, he was like, it's one thing to just speak direct to camera, but there's no one calling Will to the line. He needs to have an interview where someone can be like, you know, but at the end of the day, Chris Rock is fine. And, and Chris Rock, he's been doing his shows and, and someone mentioned that he said somewhere like, you know, I'm not a victim. I'm doing okay. It, you know, it, it did hurt, but I'm not like buckling in the corner and Chris Rock, he's thriving and surviving his he was already I think was he already on tour or about to go on a comedy tour he's doing shows they his sales actually increased um he's doing shows right now with Chris Rock you know Dave Chappelle I mean like Chris Rock is the goat a goat the goat and he you know he didn't hide. He's like, I'm still going to go out and do what I got to do. And he's still doing what he does. So I, I, at the end of the day, my, my thoughts on this is at one hand, you know, he, yeah, you should apologize. I guess I just don't like the staging of it. The we, I don't know what movie he got coming out at some point, but it's definitely damage control. And I just don't like that it took four months. Like, bro, he's like, oh, I, someone said, or he said, I don't know. He, no, he said he was somewhere with the Buddhists. So anyways, you know, Chris Rock may never have a conversation because sometimes you get to a point where, I may forgive you, but I'm going to forgive you for a far. We ain't got to have no conversation. Like, what's that conversation going to look like? You know, I, I don't think they'll ever, like, be friends or be cool or be, you know, like, I don't think that that's going to be a thing. But, I, you know, I wish, I don't wish nothing negative on Will or nobody. It's just treat people like human beings. And when you do something, it's like you have to own up to it, you know, and that's that. So, I mean, I'm like, okay, well, it, it, you know, but I'm still, I'm still team Chris. <laughs> so back to music really quickly. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Like when I tell you I love music, I don't be joking. Like I listen to music. I watch a lot of music stuff. So music be on the brain so if I ain't got nothing plan but anyways two things really quickly on social media I haven't seen it a lot but I've seen it 
a couple times within the past week where there's been this like Drew Hill versus Jodeci debate. And if you know me, Jodeci is my number one, number one, okay? And so it's not that I'm biased because I like Drew Hill. I've seen Drew Hill in concert. I, you know, I like, you know, I like all of them. I don't understand why there's 73 Wu-Tang Drew Hill members right now. I don't get that. But, you know, I'm a Drew Hill fan, too. I like him, you know. Um, <laughs> so they were saying, one, there's like, oh, Drew Hill versus, versus Joe to see who you got. But then, you know, there's been some polls, like, song for song. And I'm like, how do you compare the GOATs, the reason that Drew Hill is who they are? Like, you literally can see the influence KC had on Cisco. And even I see a little Devante and or Dalvin in Nokio. Uh, Jazz, you know, not for nothing, probably got a little JoJo up in him. I mean, like, literally the, the group is like the spitting, you know, second image, third, tenth image, I don't know, of Jodeci. But song for song, I'm like, you ain't nobody bumping we don't make love no more like they are stay for my lady fiending come and talk to me <laughs> I just that's like comparing honestly like b2k to new edition b2k is you know cool in their own genre and their own generation but they ain't no new edition bruh and I'm not saying that Drew Hill is bad. I'm just saying, like, it's hard to, like, little, like, goat legend, legendary. You know, like, it, 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 it's really hard to, like, I don't know. That's my little two cents. Actually, no, that's two dollars. I ain't even two cents. So, another thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is I watch, million, I watch the episodes. I don't watch all of them, but million, depending on who the artist is. Million dollars worth of game with Gilly the Kid and Wallow. It's been this whole thing. Five year old, five year old foreign was like, yo, Mace gave me a bad boy 2.0 deal. And so then Mace, I didn't watch five year old's interview, but I did watch Mace. I, I will say this I, I don't understand it. I'm not in the music industry and I, I it's hard to know really who's what. It sounds like real layman's terms uh mace and i could be wrong disclaimer let me know what you think about this on youtube i want to know what you think about all the stuff i'm talking about (laughs) but it sounds like mace gave signed five yo to a deal five thousand but it was on some yo rock with me and i'm gonna get you through these doors for a better deal and there was a lot of like real shifty business between whoever where mace was like i don't know if i can rock with this but at some point i don't know if he heard a song if he heard or whatever he was like you know what i'm gonna follow through i'm gonna see you know and so he brought five yo i think the def jam i don't know what label def jam universal i don't know and they got a like a almost like pretty much like a 1.5 million deal and you know he five year old got his portion mace got his portion but it sounds like the the initial thing was like i'm a i'm gonna be that one to get you this is what i'm gonna give get you just to get your feet wet you know i'm gonna hook you up with some people but i'm gonna get you that major deal and he fulfilled that deal that's what it sounded like to me i could be wrong Whatever happened, though, honestly, Fabio did sign that sign that contract, <laughs> and I think the I think the concern is probably is he whatever it is, he's still locked in that contract with Mace, even though he is on another label. He has like a label deal, but it's like you gotta read them. They always say, I don't watch enough. I don't watch enough behind the musics you know where are they now the whatevers what's the one that's on tv one i can't think of it oh unsung have you a lawyer 
listen to look at the fine print. Everybody want to get on, and they're not looking at them contracts. Them contracts be having them signed, sealed, and delivered. Like, yo, you with me until I let you go. So, you know, that's my little lame. I don't know if it's true. I don't know. But what I will say, all whatever aside, like, Mace is, like, a part of my, like, up bringing like in music right bad boy era the mace 112 biggie total like so it's just good to see mace i don't really understand his career one minute he at the pulpit or something he a preacher he a bishop i don't know the other minute he on million dollars worth of game saying nigga all the time and i you know i say i don't curse but i say nigga all the time but you know it's it just seems like he you know, he be in the music industry, but then he is in the ministry. I don't know. <laughs> There's a funny story. One of the guys in Dormtainment, which is which is these uh, entertainment creators, and they, they have, like, so much content on YouTube. One of them, I think it was Mike, but I'm not sure. They have a story about when they went to Mace's church. It is the most hilarious off the chain thing ever. <laughs> so I don't know what, you know, gotta be mindful of, you know, of all that. But I wish Mace the best. You know, I don't I don't really think he really tried to give five year the shaft. But I don't know. That's my little layman interpretation of what I have seen from this situation <laughs> so um one of the things that I have been doing kind of periodically and I don't I don't I can't say this is going to be every podcast segment but I am a therapist by trade I'm not doing direct therapy this is not but I am in the mental health field but this is not this segment and whenever I do it I am not providing professional advice um, it just interests me because couples therapy, relationship therapy, marriage counseling has always kind of been an interesting thing to me. And when I be seeing podcasts, like asking and answering relationship questions, I'm like, well, I'm literally like a therapist and I've done like relationship counseling, like family counseling. Um, even though this is not relationship advice, whenever I talk about it, on this podcast, um, I do feel like I am a qualified individual to answer certain things. But for the most part, I'll just be t- saying it from my uh, my own personal perspective. So I just kind of Google questions, and this really isn't anything like advice wise. But I think it's a really great question to think about when, if you're in a relationship, if you're wanting to be in a relationship, is what are you not willing to change? For a relationship and I think that's really important because some people they just become like a whole new person it's like well who are you that you like I do think that you when you're in a relationship right you do like there'll be some things about your significant other that I'm like man I can't stand when you you know and vice versa but when you're literally like changing your whole personality your life your goals your wants to me that is a level of like you're losing yourself in a relationship you never want to do that there should always be like a standard like this is who I am this is what I want this is what I'm willing to do what I'm not willing to do so um you know like some people will say I wouldn't relocate for a relationship and they'll have very valid reasons why like you know maybe this is a person that has children their children are in school you know there's family around they want them to be around their family the child's father is near they you know they're ingrained in their community so uprooting them wouldn't be the right thing and maybe that person just don't want to relocate in general um so for me what I would not change her relationship I will say this I will not give up my voice there's been times in my life, not in relationships, I think, where I've just kind of like da- watered down my voice or squashed my voice because I didn't want to get into it with someone or I didn't know how I was going to react to certain things or 
and it's just like I'm too old for that <laughs> um so yeah I won't give up my voice and my independence fully I do think you become when you are in a relationship especially when you're talking about like being married you have to you know there has to be that common ground that foundation those um compromises but I'm not fully giving up my independence where you're making the decisions for my life or every every decision that I'm that I do is contingent on another person because when you do that say y'all break up and this could be a marriage you'd be married for somebody for 10 years everything is based on another person what you gonna do when it's like oh I've never I haven't had to do this for myself I don't know how to do this or I don't know how to not do this without another person. Child, you best to have some of you. Like, there, you can't, do not lose yourself in a relationship. Do not be so enmeshed in a relationship. That is a word. Look it, look it up if you don't know it. That you lose yourself. And I won't give up. You know, I, my faith is very important to me. I, you know, am a Christian. I'm not giving that up. So if you think I'm converting somewhere, she ain't. Or if like the fact that I, you know, I do read my Bible and do my devotionals. And if that ain't for you, if that's a problem for you, I ain't the one for you, you know. So I won't give up my faith to be some, be with someone. Um, And I won't give up, you know, needing that me time. I think that's so important. It's like... I can't, I, and just in general, just because I, I've, I've, I've been like this since I was a child, living at home with family. I cannot be around people 24-7. I used to be in my room, you know, and then I would pop out dinner, TV, whatever, but then I got to go back, like, and I think that's just me being like an introvert and you know I gotta recharge and so but nonetheless I gotta have some stuff for me I you know I've seen couples where it's just like they don't do anything without each other like they gotta go shopping they gotta go eat they gotta go to events they gotta go if she with her friends oh he there too ain't no other male around it's 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 a girl's night but it's a girl's night plus Bob. I'm just using the name. Like, how the heck we having a girl's night with a guy? <laughs> That's not, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> so I'm not going to give up that that time where, that I need for me with my friends, with myself, with my hobbies. Like, I don't want to give that up. So that's what I won't change for a relationship off the top of my head. And I mentioned that my segment that I would be doing periodically whenever I have something to do it on would be my entertainment recommendations. Usually it's a show, but if I have any other entertainment recommendations, I will give that to you. And it's really nothing new. I am recapping Ready to Love. I just recapped the initial premiere episode of season six check that out if you are watching ready to love but i enjoy the show what i really love about it is like these are all um african-american men women professional in their 30s and above and so it's nice to not have like just like you know like horny 20 something year olds like love island even though i do watch love island now these people really want long well they present themselves as they want long-term relationships that may be the, the better way to describe it so if you have seen previous seasons and it, it did start back up again july 29th and if you're looking for a new reality show that might be kind of cool to watch i recommend ready to love and my song of the podcast for today is actually a song that came out set many years ago probably um it's by faith evans and i was just listening to my radio station on apple music and it popped up i had never i don't think i ever listened to this song that album came out in 2005 
the first lady but the song is called true love and it's a really beautiful song i love faith she's such a she has such a pretty voice and i just i adore have i ever seen faith live if i have i don't remember and that doesn't mean anything i've just been to a lot of shows but yeah that's the song on the podcast faith evans true love man i have been doing some long episodes lately (laughs) i actually pre-recorded an episode that will most likely be released in september when i'm when i'm out of town or maybe my birthday weekend i don't know which one but yeah i it's cool i i hope that these long episodes are okay i don't know i when and the irony of it is i'm like i don't know i didn't have anything planned i didn't have anything planned and this is going up to almost an hour <laughs> But um, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all of you. Like I said, Eternal Rambles releases every Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. My normal content and my bonus content releases whenever I am able to record and release it. Be on the lookout for my first recap review of Married at First Sight this week. And you can catch me wherever you get your podcast episodes, such as Apple Podcasts, CastBox, Amazon, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and on YouTube. Listen, what are you thinking about any of the stuff that I ever talk about? If you want to interact with me, that's where to do it at. And on Apple Music, I would appreciate a subscribe and a review or rating. I think it's a rating that you do on Apple Podcasts. But as I always say, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all of you. Please take care of yourselves. And if you are able, take care of each other. And until next episode, this is your girl, Rochelle. Talk to you soon.